very good afternoon to everyone present on this virtual platform of learning. I, Dr. Anjali, on behalf of Jane Dean to the University, welcome you all to the national level web webinar on digital thinking and mobile teaching. On behalf of faculty research cell from Shodhana School of Commerce, a wing of Jane Dean to the University, I would like to extend my hearty welcome to the chief guest, speaker, head of departments, coordinators, faculties, and all the participants from various institutions and corporate sector. Jane deemed to be university, an intellectual destination that draws inspired students from more than 38 countries to India's Silicon Valley, Bengaluru. Jane University has been established with an aim to provide quality education and entrepreneurial development because of its commitment to learning, research, academia, and entrepreneurial development NAC, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, has awarded A grade to Jain Deem to be University. Empowerment of students, enhancement of values, and enrichment of academics and research has been the hallmark of School of Commerce at Jain Deem to be University for nearly three decades. The constant innovations nurtured in its various spheres of functioning, which include global tie ups such as ACCA, CIMA, CMA, CIPS, etc. And experiential learning practices like student immersion programs, entrepreneurs on training and business simulation, amongst others, have characterized the growth of School of Commerce over the years. I deem it an honor to welcome our guest speaker for the day, Dr. Shashank S. Bazirkar Sir. Sir is a graduate from Bangalore with an honorary doctorate for his contribution in the field of training and development. Sir has studied from Sri Vani Education Center, Rajaji Nagar, Bangalore. He was very active in sports. He presented as a state level sprinter. He has also played cricket at state level for the under 19 cricket team. He has performed various stage shows as mimic artist, drama, singing, yashagana, and many more. He regularly, regularly performs on various radio channels like 94.3 Radio 1, Fever 104 FM, and Big FM 92.7. Sir has completed his engineering in 1993 with specialization in electronic and communication. After the degree, he immediately started working with a marketing job. With over 27 years of professional experiences, in which 20 years contributed in the field of education, Sir has trained more than 4,000 engineers. Along with all this, Sir is an outstanding motivational speaker. On humanitarian grounds, he has proved himself to be a kind and giving person. He has been actively supporting BBMP by supplying food and helping families who are under home quarantine. Sir has also received Best Trainer Award when working in HP. Thank you, Sir, for gracing us with your presence. Without any further delay, I request Dr. Shishank S. Vazarkar, sir, to take over this session. Hey, very good afternoon to all of you. And I know um, last year of a week with uh, uh, excellent uh, long weekend, though most of us are working from home, it's more like a holiday itself, but still everyone working from their respective locations and home or schools, college, universities. But still, this uh, fantastic uh, thought of, you know, a long weekend always prevails in our mind. And uh, actually, the session was uh, scheduled to be tomorrow. Uh, but being a wonderful, nice day of uh, uh, Varma Mahalakshmi, we just, uh, you know, thought it would be better if we could do it today. And uh, then we, we were able to accommodate it. And I really appreciate all the one. I think I can see about 163 as of now participants who have been with us. And... Um, they have made it up with their busy schedule to be here on this platform. And uh, I'm sure that the time that we'll be spending uh, from now on uh, should be quite uh, value added to you. And uh, I shall thank uh, everyone who has been uh, coordinating with me right from the Jain University. Uh, uh, special thanks to uh, Dr. Mira, who is, uh, I think, uh, working as a librarian there, who, who is a very good friend of mine at a personal level. And uh, she approached me and asked me if it is possible for us to have a session. And uh, it's my privilege that I would be here and spending some time with you all. 
uh, uh, the complete faculties uh, who have been uh, part of uh, JNU University, including Sharmila ma'am. Um, they have been coordinating with me from past few days. A lot of gives and takes have happened. They requested some things. I requested some things. And in a very short duration, they were able to you know, frame this uh, session. So let's make the session more interactive, more uh, learning. Uh, there could be some questions that may come up. And uh, uh, I would request you to punch in your uh, replies at the chat window. I will try to access that uh, on my system so that uh, there is an interaction happening. But however, if there is a person who feels uh, they would like to talk to me, uh, then they can unmute and have a word. But let, let it not become a kiosk. Uh, that, that, that's always my request, too. Uh, great. So again, a warm welcome to everyone who was with me, and uh, we will start our journey on digital thinking. It says digital learning on the on the platform here, but it's more to do with digital thinking. So we will start with digital thinking. Just let me share uh, my screen with you. There it goes. So digital thinking and mobile teaching is something that uh, the, the topic of the day that we have chosen for. Okay. And uh, the moment we say about digital thinking, it's, it's a huge window. So let us make our journey more comfortable. We will go step by step, understand each concept at uh, various examples that I would like to give you. And slowly, when we get to a comfort zone, from there on, we will catch up with the speed. And uh, you know, we will try to exchange our ideas on digital thinking and making mobile learning a better experience. Um, this generation, or the set of people who are here, I think most of them are professors, lecturers, and uh, uh, at least uh, let us take an average age of everyone to be somewhere around close to 40, 45. So if you are going to talk about an age limit of about 40, 45 people, uh, age limit of about 40, 40, 45 years, that means to say this is one of the best generation that has uh, been living here. Why? Because our generation is a people who have seen dial phones, so-called the landline phones, wherein you had to dial each digit to smartphones, right? Even in smartphones, you don't even have to dial you just have to speak out the name of the person and it dials it for you right so the complete technology transformation right from dial phones to smartphones from no tv rather to say a huge box of a tv to a very smart and a very compressed tv as of today so no tv to a smart tv we had only one channel when we were kids today we have multiple channels that have been running not only on tv but also on the computers. We have YouTube channels. We have uh, different forums, different uh, uh, sites wherein you can go and you know start your own digital channels. So there is no limitation from no channel or a single channel TVs to multiple channels that we have today. Rather, we ourselves were just students when we were kids. But today's students are not just students. They are smarter students. And we have seen printed books to ebooks and right from paper maps to today's Google map. Luckily, that this session is happening on a, on a, a net, so called as a Zoom meeting. If this would have been most probably in a campus or something, and if someone had to travel, I am sure most of us would have used this Google map to reach the destination or the location, without which, today moving around in any of the cities has become a bigger challenge. The city from where I have grown, from that place where I have spent about 40 years, even if I go to a new area today, things have drastically changed that I will not be able to reach my destination unless and until I use a Google map and find out where exactly I'm supposed to go. Right. So this generation is a beautiful generation because the transformation that we have seen, I'm sure no other generation will be able to express and experience what we have seen. And I'm sure all of you would be agreeing on that. Um, so let us say, um, as uh, uh, 
we spend more time uh, almost like uh, let me let me just take you through my my career journey okay um, as rightly said by ma'am uh, 93 i graduated and took up marketing and marketing was something which i always enjoyed because that was uh, the place where i got to interact with strangers and develop my communication skills and as a young boy that was something which was very much required for me but there was always uh, something which drew uh, or uh, you know always always made me feel that uh, teaching line was something which always fascinated and that's the reason i joined jet king uh, that time jet king was one of the one of the premium schools for uh, external education on electronics and networking so there i joined as a faculty and spent about 2 years in jet king after that i got an opportunity to work as a lecturer in ks polytechnic and also as a visiting faculty for government women's polytechnic that is near nnkrv and uh, there i was taking the subjects called as ibm pc and its clowns and basics of networking that is where i got more inclined and uh, you know graduated myself with the knowledge of it then i got an opportunity to work with g where i joined them as a technical trainer and uh, trained the people who were inside the organization so about 5 to 6 years which i spent in g there i used to teach about desktops and uh, printers and servicing of those basic uh, components later on i got an opportunity to work with hp hp i joined them in helping and serving them rather to say i was training people on enterprise technology what is enterprise technology i will be introducing it to you very shortly and then on i got an opportunity to work with ibm from past about 12 years close to 12 years now i've been with ibm i'm um, heading a training division so education center and skills development is my main area there and about 20 25 years now close to i've been into in the this training line and have spent a lot of time with most of the students engineers as well as faculties lecturers give and take happens because learning is a is an ongoing process i even today learn so this is a bit a small very quick and a very short introduction of what i used to do and uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to get introduced to what is digital thinking why is this digital thinking in place or why is it required how is that we are going to implement this digital thinking and then using this digital thinking how we can get into the mobile teaching methodologies as is the need of time today and then we will be talking about what are the advantages and challenges that we will be facing in mobile teaching and finally will be open for some questions right so what is digital thinking um okay before to this uh, let me just tell you that uh, you know i have been spending as i told you uh, spending time with students kids and very importantly i have got my son uh, who is doing his engineering with me at home so there is a lot of interaction that happens with us but when he was in the school things were different he used to come up and ask me a few questions and uh, i used to answer at time because that, at that level uh, of his schooling his thinking process and the knowledge that i had acquired was quite enough for me to go ahead and you know uh, satisfy his needs but uh, as time grew up he became more curious and the more he curious he became the more tougher the questions were for me right once he came and asked me what that what's the difference you say you are uh, you are working as an education center and a skills manager okay what is what is this education and what is this knowledge uh, what is the skill he keeps asking me this kind of question but at that time you know it was like oh what is it let me let me look into that so after doing a bit of research i got to know that there is a quite very narrow difference between education and training as you and uh, skills and knowledge any idea if anyone would like to punch in uh, into the chat window as to what do you think would be a difference between uh, education and skill i shall try to access the chat window by that time if anyone would like to unmute yourself and like to speak to me we shall do it quickly i'm sorry sir for the interruption can you please uh, turn it to a full window of the ppt full window of the ppt okay is it blocking something mm, let me minimize this does this happen is it better now 
the it's the same can you just uh, put a slide show on so that the only the current screen is visible i had done that i thought it was on yeah this is better okay so this was about the journey that i had so in case if you would have missed the full screen of the ppt then this is what it is and i shall thank uh, the person who corrected me i was under the preview that i have been sharing my screen under slideshow okay so we were on the agenda and we were on thinking okay right but still i am not able to see this a chat window maybe because fair enough yeah i see some no audio is there no audio now you able to hear me uh yes sir you're clear right now so can you just press f5 on your keypad so it's done it's, it's done right now i now uh, i'm sharing it now i'm sharing it under uh, view itself no it's still shown the same showing? way okay sham f5 is what i do uh, sir yes I, uh, and you need to enable the editing there on top on of the top it. yeah then f5 uh, it should show full screen on my laptop it's working in on my laptop it's completely on a full screen only so the, 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 there's a top line which says protected view enable editing can you see that no it's not coming just a minute wait
whether your screen is visible now and uh, yeah. yeah we are resuming now perfectly fine yeah thank you very much and sorry for the inconvenience uh, there was some hitch in the in my system i think thanks for correcting it uh, I did not observe that it was happening because on my screen it was a full window, so I thought everything was visible as I see on my screen. Great. There are some challenges in virtual technologies, anyways, but we will nice, nice that we were able to handle it. Uh, good. So let's proceed. Uh, I think uh, the question that I had put across was with respect to what is the difference between uh, uh, knowledge and skill. So uh, let me just try to access the chat window if something comes up. I'm not able to see the chat window unless I stop sharing, but okay, so this was where we were fine. Okay. So getting back to uh, this, okay, I'm not able to see the chat window, but I'm sure if someone would have put their answers there, great. If not, uh, I will surely access it the moment I uh, uh, stop sharing the screen. Um, education or knowledge, rather to say, we were talking about knowledge and skill. Knowledge is something that can be acquired and skill is something that needs to be developed. Okay, so let me give you a quick example of uh, what I mean by uh, acquiring a knowledge. Acquiring a knowledge can be as simple as saying that, okay, I take you near, uh, I, I just draw a nice swimming pool uh, picture onto a board, and then I'm going to say that this is this is how a pool looks like. This is what is called as a standing, uh, a stand wherein you put up yourself, Put your legs onto it, bend down, stretch yourself, and throw your body straight into the water. And once you put your body into the water, keep shaking your hands, legs in a synchronized manner, keep breathing, and this is how you swim. How to swim? Knowledge is acquired. But will I be able to directly swim the moment I get into the pool? No. So whatever knowledge that I have acquired as how to swim, when I start implementing that knowledge over a period of time with practice, okay, I may be able to start first day, maybe I just get into the water, keep my legs on and then take a support and start hitting my legs. Slowly, I start floating. Then I start synchronizing my body with my hands and legs and then I start swimming, right? So when I start swimming, now that is a skill. Whereas how to swim is just a knowledge, right? So knowledge is something that you can acquire and skill is something that you need to develop. Similarly, he came up with one day with the question as what is the difference between education and training? Okay, I'm just going a bit fast because we lost a, bit, a few minutes in the, in the technical hitch. So when we're talking about education and uh, training, education is something in which you have the right to ask why. That would say there has to be a reasoning. When you're under education, you have the rights to ask why. Why? Why are we doing this? What, what is the purpose of it? Why? When the reasoning part of it is being answered and the ans answers that you discover for it make you an educated person. Whereas training is development of a skill more of it. And But once the skill has been developed, then you're only going to implement those skills. Okay? But very rarely or rather you will not get an opportunity to ask why. That is why we always don't say that a soldier is a trained soldier, is what we say. We never say he's an educated soldier. Why? Because when a soldier is on the border and he is given an order, fire, he has to follow the instructions. That's it. He cannot sit there and ask why. From four months I've been sitting here, you did not ask me to fire. Why are you asking me to fire now? No, he's a trained engineer. Instruction given, follow. And he's developed the skill of how to fire. And he does it. So implementation of that skill on based on instructions become a trained engineer, then an educated. Education is one part of it. Obviously, that's required. Similarly, he has been asking this kind of questions, and I have been sharing those uh, responses. And uh, for some, obviously, I was able to answer instantaneously because they were something which were falling under my domain. So there are a lot of questions that he asked, which are which do not fall under my domain. And then my response to him would be, "Well, that's a good question." Whenever I Initially, <laughs> he thought I was encouraging him. Only later, he found out that whenever I said that it was a good question, that means to say I don't know the answer. Fine. And then slowly, I had to go back and depend on the great master, so-called as Mr. Google. So I went to Google. I searched for the answers. I learned. 
and then I used to go back and tell him, this is what it is. Well, later, I also became a bit smarter. I said, why is that I am doing this? So what I did was, I used to do a research or try to find out something that is new happening in the technology and then go back to him and ask him a question. Hey, did you hear something about this? And then he used to say, no, I don't know. I said, okay, can you tell me what it is? Now, it was the, we had, we had turned the table. He was doing the research. He was going and searching the answers and coming me and educating me as to what are the new things that have been prevailing in the society, market, uh, the technology that's happening and other things. So that way, you know, the, the give and take of learning has been happening. And slowly and slowly, okay, we started changing, exchanging our ideas. Okay. So today's need has been more of virtual learning. Okay. What is this virtual learning? Virtual learning, let me be honest, is not something very new. Virtual learning has been happening in right from our ancient days. Okay. Uh, initially, we used to have those Gurukul kind of a system. I'm not going to take more of history of that, but Gurukul system, most of you are aware that people used to be there. Children used to be living in an ashram. Guru used to teach. The most knowledgeable person in that ashram was the Guruji or the Acharya whom we used to call. He used to guide the students and the students used to learn. Now, it was more of a self-paced learning. The child who was able to learn faster, okay, would get graduated automatically and the Guruji used to give him the next level of knowledge. And the person who took his time to understand the, the initial concepts was given enough of time to learn that, accept it. Once he is ready, then the Guruji used to pass on the next level of language or the next level of class for him. And slowly, there was no pressure for the child as such as to that he has done it and I have not done it unless there was more of a competition. But slowly, we moved to the academic structure and the academic structure has brought in, an, uh, brought in a very fantastic saying that one year of an academic, this is the portions that have to be covered. This is what the child has to learn. And then we take their exams and if he's able to clear, he moves to the next level. If he's not able to clear, we most probably the time detain the child. But even today, detaining of a child till his 10th standard has become a challenge, which in turn just adds pressure to the child. Well, I'm not here to, to talk to about to anything more about how you should uh, be able to take the child to the next level faster. But uh, I, I have been dealing with most of this kind of children who have so, who have problem with learning because my wife works as a special educator in an, in a school where most of the time we are catering to the students who find difficulty in catching up with the academics. But it's a nice study. Fair. But when we get into this kind of a mode of self-learning, self-learning is a need of time. Okay. I do see... Uh, Anusha Mehta has raised her hand. You would like to ask me a question, please? Anush Mehta? No, sir, my be mistakenly. You can go ahead. No problem. Yeah, fine. Thank you. <clears throat> Great. So, uh, okay. So, we were talking about the self learning pace. If we actually see in our ancient days also, Okay, self-learning has been something that has been prevailing. If you take an example of uh, Ekalavya, Ekalavya has done self-learning. Okay, more of a virtual learning. He used to see what has been taught. He used to come and practice, and then he has learned the art. So it's more of a self-learning piece. Even if you talk about Abhimanyu as an example, Abhimanyu had acquired the knowledge of how to get into Chakravivya right even before his birth. Virtual learning. Okay, but technology is what different. That's it. Right. So today. When we are talking about virtual training, okay, there are lots of things that we have to keep doing and we will be uh, learning about. So what is this thinking? Let's get into digital thinking. Okay. If we get by definition of thinking, right? Thinking says that it is, um, it is a mental process which has been you know, in a form of a psychological association with models of the world. Thinking is manipulating of the information. As and when we form concepts, engagement with problem solving, reasoning, making decisions, everything involves something kind of a, a process so-called as thinking. It also gives, once you start thinking, one thought prevails and gives rise to multiple thoughts. So it's just nothing but a chain reaction of lots of processes of thinking happening. 
when this is happening inside one brain it is just one brain which is thinking similarly when you go on to instead of you as a person doing it by yourself if you are asking a machine to do it which is nothing but so called a computer as of today okay a digital something doing the process of thinking for you in turn can be made as or termed as digital thinking that is the way we are going to understand the world okay the way we are going to understand the world okay so understanding of the world is actually called in a digital fashion okay we are just talking about digital fashion of thinking now earlier if you would have noticed you know i um, my son one one day came back from college and he says dad i need to pay uh, abcd amount as a fine i said why what happened no my mobile phone has been confiscated by the by the institute because uh, we, we had carried it into the class and a random check was done and the then the mobiles have been confiscated so i need to pay fine and get it released i said fair enough i went i took paid the amount and got that release and told him not to take the phones to college anymore today's world has changed earlier mobile phones were not allowed to be taken into the college but today the college schools and all the institutions are running on the mobile technology okay no one had ever thought that this day would come where people would be sitting at their home and attending their institutes colleges and other things thanks to corona made it possible right um <coughs> just a minute please Hey, sorry for the interruption. Just wanted to grab some water. Mm, classes are going on through Zooms. Yes, classes are going on through Zooms. Okay. <clears throat> so um, let me let me just take you on to um, a, a different mode uh, of thinking. Now, there are. Uh, let us let us let me take an example okay uh, maybe a person just uh, starts thinking that he wants to buy a particular product or is looking for a particular service or is maybe just that i want to look for a person who can come and you know um, uh, repair my washing machine or something and i start thinking whom should i approach because calling um, uh, call center and i spoke to the concern company they said because of lockdown maybe a person may come or may not come so the next option is what go to google so in case i just put a query into google okay immediately after that is been put into google even before i could come out of google or i have finished my search okay there are about 10 to 15 smss or advertisements that have already started popping on my screen saying that this is the nearest company which is available for you for a particular uh, product or this service or that service and i'm thinking i was just looking for a service how is that the people got to know or how it, how did this particular agency get to know that i am looking for a, a servicing product that is because there is something so called as a pattern of thinking right the moment i put a search into google there is an there is a trigger that has been put up into google and all the people or the business people who have tied up with google immediately start getting an sms based on my location okay that this person in your location is looking for a particular service and they start immediately shooting out an sms saying that okay i am look you are looking for this service we are available we are available earlier people used to spend lots of money into advertising and not sure whether that advertisement would actually give them or fetch them the results or not but today the marketing technology has changed people are getting exactly target oriented customers that means to say if i am looking for a particular service and they get an sms and i get an sms they are for sure that this person is looking for a service and he is a sure customer for me 
Moreover, let us take another example. Um, say, for example, uh, my daily routine is uh, for earlier when I when I was working um, or going to office as such. Then it was to be like okay, morning eight o'clock, eight thirty, I finish my breakfast, I leave, I travel from this place to this place. Um, say about 10 kilometers my journey happens then i go my vehicle is stopped there i am in that particular location from about uh, uh, 10 o'clock to six o'clock from six o'clock i move out or between lunch time all the movements that i have been doing okay for a period of say for example from day one to day 10 or day 15 is been constantly monitored 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 which we call as data points when these data points are being captured on a regular basis Okay, and an analysis analysis of this has been done. Okay, there are possibilities that a person may say that okay, every Wednesdays I have seen that this person goes to a particular shop, maybe a pizza center in the for lunch. Okay, first week he has gone, second week he has gone, third week he has gone. Now for fourth sure, the fourth week Wednesday also he will be going for a pizza shop. Now what happens is immediately on my system. I'll start getting saying that every time you have been going to Pizza Hut, now Domino's advertisement will come saying that this particular Domino, which is close to your location, is giving you 50% discount. Now, will I go to Pizza Hut or will I go to Domino's? Automatically, I'll say I've been trying Pizza Hut for quite some time. Let me go ahead and find out as to what can be done or how what is the offer that Domino's is giving. Now, my choice has changed. That means to say Domino has got a new customer and he has, all this has been happening because there is someone who has been capturing my data only because I have been carrying a phone with my, in my pocket, which has got Google installed into it, which is tracking my locations, my activities, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing and constant data capturing and analysis of that particular data can do further predictions. When this kind of an activity is being consistently done, okay, that is nothing but digital thinking. Many a times you might have noticed, okay, uh, a very good couple or a very ideal couple, they don't have to say what has to be done by the other person, right? It's it's one o'clock, lunch will be supplied. It's four o'clock, tea will be supplied. Along with tea, you need A, B, C, D. The, the partner exactly notes what's, what has been required. It is not that, that that has been developed in a day. That has been developed over a period of time because that is the pattern that they have been following across for a period of time. That is just an example of one family or one instance. Same kind of instance, multiple actions that have been done by a person has been captured on a regular basis for a period of time. And when an analysis has been done, you get you will be able to predict, you will be able to foresee, you will be able to know what exactly would happen, what would be the person's next move, okay? And all that is possible because of so-called digital thinking. You would not be surprised if I make a statement that Google knows you better than you. I re-insist on the statement. Google knows a lot more than you better than what you know about you, okay? So similarly, <clears throat> for, for all this to happen, you know, uh, constantly happening and a uh, lot of things that runs at a back end, there is something called as a technology called as an enterprise technology. Enterprise technology is something to do with your servers. There are fabricator, fabric level that has been required. Then there are network uh, fabric switches that are there and then the storage fabric. When I say fabric, fabric is more to do with the uh, the uh, optical cables and optical channel of communication. Well, I'll not be getting into the technology aspects of it, but there are huge servers which will be able to handle lots amount of data, which can run at a speed of light, which will be capturing every instance of what you're doing. And that can be stored into a huge multiple storage. And all this connected together are running at a backend with a lot of applications, which will be doing your analysis and giving the throughput or output. Our astrology, which most of us we do say, is nothing but a study of different planets in different locations. How have they been affecting a person? Okay, when that study has been done over a period of time, you are able to predict, okay, that this particular planet in this particular house is going to have this effect. That is why your future is going to be this. Okay, just a very short outcome of what I'm talking because I don't want to get into astrology, but that is digital thinking. Something that happens on a digital platform with thinking associated with it is 
digital thinking. It is more of understanding the world around you. So when we talk about uh, after digital thinking, let me move on to the next slide. Okay. <coughs> digital thinking will land up with the five aspects of elements of digital thinking. One is with respect to speed. Okay, when we talk about speed, it is more to do with the technology that is evolving very fast. What, we, what are the systems that we used few years back today are absolute. What we'll be using today will be absolute in another few days. Something new will come, right? The technology is changing at a very high speed. And for every institute, if we, I'll be concentrating more on institute or more of teaching part of the change because with the, the way the things are changing, Okay, if institutes take a lot of time in understanding the change, adapting that particular change, okay, and then they start thinking, okay, we should we should get into this technology, we should be we should utilize this and wait for huge amount of data to be accumulated so that they will be able to, you know, actually say that this particular technology is required by that time the technology becomes absolute. So it's very much necessary that the institutions today, if they are planning to get into mobile technology or mobile teaching, okay, then they have to act fast. They have to take decisions very fast. They have to increase the ability to accept the information and start implementing the technology into, the, into practical applications faster. We talk about simplicity. Simplicity is more about, you know, that particular product, that particular service that you're looking for should be available. Okay, it's more to do with availability of the services. When I say uh, availability of the services, okay, our brain processes information, okay, and some things are clear, some things are not clear. Similarly, there are a lot of things that when we don't understand, we need to go for it let me give you an example okay if i am looking for uh, looking for a, i want to learn for example a pythagoras theorem let me take a very simple thing pythagoras theorem earlier if i wanted to learn about pythagoras theorem then it will depend on i being at the right time with the right teacher at the right class that means to say at the right grade okay and at the right um, moment when the teacher is teaching that particular subject if all these things match, only then I am able to learn Pythagoras theorem. But it, that is not the case today. Today, I want to learn Pythagoras theorem. It is not restricted to any of this, neither the time, neither the teacher, neither the location, neither the grade, neither. There is nothing there is, it is very simple. I just have to get into one particular app and then put what I require and that will come back and show it to me. The availability, okay, is how simple it is for me to access it. Right? One is the speed, how fast I can access it. Second, how simple it is for me to access. When we talk about experimentation, okay, digital thinking uh, means uh, it's, it's on more of priority. Okay? We plan, we act, we try to do something. Sufficient information is available, great. Sufficient information is not available. Then we keep doing experimentation, some things work, something does not work. More of experimentation plays a vital role. As of today, if you see, okay, um, uh, my son, as I told you, is in RV. So what happens is that for them, when the classes were going on, that means to say physical classes, classroom sessions were going on, even then, the complete lecture that was going on was recorded. Okay, it was an experimental basis. The complete session was getting recorded. However, the attendance of the child in the school present, physically present was also captured, but the complete video was captured and uploaded onto their intranet site. Okay. And when that was implemented onto an intranet site, in case a child has missed particular information or was not able to understand something, okay, immediately he could come back home, get onto the intranet site and access that lecture and re-go through the complete session and whatever doubts, whatever he did not understand, was getting clarified for him. Some days he was unwell because see, ultimately we are all human and human brain has got a, has got a limitation of concentration. Even though session is of 40 minutes in a class, 
a child would not be able to concentrate for more than 8 to 10, 10 minutes as of today's study, maximum 15 to 20 minutes. After that, his brain is no more ready to accept unless there is a break of one or two minutes for him to refresh his brain and get back. So there are chances that you would have missed on something. So they experimented this. They said, why not we capture the whole lecture and put it onto the class? And all the students, only the, those particular students from the, that particular session have got access to this. They can go and review that particular session. And that experiment worked fine. They found that the students were able to get more clarity, more the, the, the work of the lecturer reduced because otherwise it would have been that they next day go and say that I did not understand this particular concept. Can you please re-explain it to me? And the lecturer would have to take out some extra time from his, his work and then explain it to him, right? But that is now reduced. So experimentation was done and it was it's quite successful. So that way, digital thinking can also make things possible. Experimentation happens, bringing it to a practical, whether it works, and then you, if it is successful, great. If it is not successful, does not mean you give up. You re-experiment to find out what is that that you can do better to make it give a better experience for it, right? So after that comes collaboration. Collaboration is one of the most key aspects of anything, not only digital thinking. Another example or something that I would like to tell is because um, uh, again, associated with Avi or getting to know more with them. I uh, recently was interacting with someone and they told me that, you know, because they had the infrastructure Okay, they did not restrict of making these videos and other things and uploading it only for them. They also interacted with a lot of government colleges where they do not have this infrastructure. Government college students who may not have accessibility for this kind of an, an st structure or infrastructure where they will be able to access the online classes and will be able to educate themselves in this particular period. So these colleges are institutions have collaborated with lots of government colleges and made it possible for those students also to access the online section and interact with the students and still be ready with the requirement of their academics in this kind of a challenging situation, right? So collaboration does not mean it is only from one institute to other institute. Collaborations can be with, between the lecturer and also uh, uh, between lecturers and uh, the students. It can also be between an institute and corporates also, because corporates, when we say, it is very much necessary because corporates have got a lot of, lot of knowledge. There are lots of institutes which I recently had um, uh, visited uh, before the lockdown uh, with respect to some, some kind of a talking that we were doing. And there we found that there are lots of institutes in which the corporates have invested. We have Cisco, we have Juniper, uh, we have uh, IBM, we have uh, HP, okay? They have their own education centers in their uh, in the colleges and they run a particular session on a particular stipulated time for a selected set of students who are interested in that, okay? And they get educated. There is one of my person um, uh, who's called as KG who runs an organization by name AppStream. He has tied up with lots of institute wherein data science has been, or uh, the enterprise technology has been taught at the college level itself. And even before the graduate the students are able to graduate, they are ready for the corporate industry. I do see some of the hands going up. If you want to ask me a question, I would like to, Kamal Das. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I think that you can have the questions later. In case if you have that, Kamal Das, we will you can feel comfortable to ask me later. Coming to the fifth point is adaptability. Okay. The fast phase of digital environment. Okay. The way it goes. Okay. You, you have to adapt to that particular technology. Okay. Online classes were never ever thought by any of the institutes. Many institutes started teaching the teachers on how online classes can be conducted. There were lots of challenges. There were lots of the challenges is just not with respect to the, the, the um, you know, readiness of the teacher to deliver on, on online classes. There is a lot of technical background that is required. You need to have bandwidth. You need to have inter internet connectivity. You need to have uh, a storage place, or you need to access something which will give you a, a, a platform wherein you can interact like Zoom, 
is giving you a platform today only because zoom has made this particular uh, technology possible it is it is good for us to sit anywhere and anywhere in this part of the world and still be a part of this and connecting if you as of now if you actually see i am not i'm though i'm speaking to you virtually actually i'm speaking to the camera okay i am speaking only to the camera right now only the camera is in front of me but there are lots of people behind the camera right i am interacting with you that is possible and we have we have adapted to this particular technology today zoom is one of it we have got microsoft team okay there are lots of apps which is making this possible today right and we have ad adapted it so adaptability plays a very very important role rather to say uh, i would like to mention uh, one of my neighbor who stays in this uh, in the same apartment you know he had come up with an excellent idea what he did was that uh, uh, he developed a particular uh, kit okay the kit has got all the ics that are required for conducting the experiments right from first semester of uh, your electronics to your final year and whenever i say about um, doing an experiment on an electronic uh, device that means to say i'm going to talk about a signal generator i'm going to talk about an oscilloscope i'm going to talk about voltmeter ammeter connectors everything has been incorporated into a very small box app has been developed you just have to download that app onto your system connect those uh, requirements onto the board okay right from your signal generator that means to say an ac signal getting in to whatever kind of an output that you want can be conducted all the experiments can be conducted at home just sitting at home imagine right new thoughts new idea and adapted by people why because in college i have to wait for a particular period i had to wait for that particular uh, session to happen i need to wait for the components to be available and then in the stipulated period i'm supposed to conduct the experiment and if i want to redo it the challenges are different but that's not the case today you can do it sitting at your home multiple times you can play around with it okay if i change this parameter what will, how is the output going to be if i change this parameter how is the output going to be enormous ways of experimenting it all that if and only if i'm going to adapt it to it if i don't adapt then it's difficult right great so let's proceed with the next thought okay implementing this technology okay the digital uh, transformation okay is a change associated with application of digital technology in all the aspects of human society today everything happens online you go for you book your um, Your tickets online you travel uh, traveling has to be physical okay it cannot happen online but if because of the permit uh, the the situation that is going on as of now with the lockdown okay even travel is happening virtual you sit at home and you know virtually visit taj mahal right and uh, anyway so basically digital transformation has been happening in all aspects of our life okay today survival of any organization business or any kind of activity that is happening is going to perishing unless and until it becomes digital businesses don't fail what fails is that they fail to evolve to the new technology the digital transformation elements okay are often connected with customer experience your operational agility your culture and the leadership that is going to, who culture and leadership plays a very important role because people who are at the decision making level okay it all depends on them how are they going to push and make people adapt to this particular technology many a colleges where we had approached earlier and we we said that you know this is this is a kind of a thing that we will be able to implement the very first thing they said is uh who is going to invest we do not have people who will be able to teach this there are there are scarcity of lecturers there are scarcity of technology there are scarcity of funds okay when the top management leaders speak all this then it becomes very difficult for anyone to adapt it so leaders leadership plays the culture and the leadership plays a very important role if you want to do digital transformation workforce enablement is very very important because unless and until the people who are actually going to execute that particular thing are not ready then nothing can happen and digital technology is always integration it cannot happen individually or it cannot happen just like working on one particular platform there are eight key roles for digital transformation and they are the digital transformation the, you need a person who is who will be 
taking a lead for it as a digital transformation lead this person is the one who should have excellent soft skills he should be able to interact with both the management as well as the people from uh, who are going to actually make this possible vendors abcd all the people who are going to be involved so there is one person who will become a digital transformation lead okay then there is a change champion a change champion is a person who will make an analysis of what is already existing and what are the changes that needs to be brought in so that they can be integrated with a minimum cost so that everything can be put into place and make it made it possible a technical engineer is the person who is actually going to implement this a business expert is a person who is going to say how much of money has been invested into it and how much of returns can be got into it that could be by uh, ex explaining or making uh, admissions possible for uh, for your colleges in a better way saying that okay by investing this we are able to get more number of students into your college give a better um, uh, showcase a better uh, output of the students who are graduating from our institute that way a business expert comes into picture a data ar architect is a person who is going to design the complete format of it there are people who will be looking at users experience as well as customers experience who will be doing the analysis of all that and saying that yes this works this does not work the financial analysis is going to be a person who is going to see how much of cost is available how much can be implemented how much uh, returns can be got what is the duration of time that it will take us for us to get the returns of investment that we have done that is called roi and finally we also need a critical hacker a critical hacker is a very important person because students are much smarter than you they can hack your system anytime so you need to have a person who can keep a track of what is what can be done what can be not necessary that you need to have eight different people to do different kind of roles there could be a possible that one person itself can be able to roll out but getting that kind of a skill is very difficult so that is the reason these eight people or eight roles have to be implemented who does it how they does it is is purely on your personal level at or the institutional level who will be able to take a decision but this is a pattern when you have these eight people in place okay your digital transformation will happen fine so digital thinking with today's mobile teaching is one mobility it is transferable uh, transportable and it is useful anywhere today there is no limitation of a person i want to study i have the urge to learn that is what is required place does not matter for me right there is a lot of versatility earlier we had only windows platform or an red hat linux platform today you have an enormous number of platforms there are various learning tasks that can be conducted when i say platform i just don't talk about operating systems it could be any of the learning apps that you are using okay lots of you just get into youtube and put a particular topic and you say i want to search for this the kind of list that will come you will get confused which to accept and which not to accept that much of versatility of platforms are available for you noise free okay there is no disturbance like when you are sitting in a classroom session there is a possibility that the windows are open it's raining it's thundering uh, fans are on Uh, different kind of uh, or your neighbor is talking to your another person okay any kind of a disturbance could be there but when you are into mobile technology teaching okay a headphone you and the device with the app you are attached with or maximum the person at the other end who is as i am speaking to you maybe a lecturer or someone speaking to you totally noise free right it can be interactive okay multi modes are there you can use audio videos graphics are available various forms are available to give feedback as to how it happened whether it happened good whether it improvements are required scope of improvement is always there and every um, negative feedback that has been taken in a positive way is always going to only take you to progress it is only going to help you become more uh, successful and give more features there are a lot of options different apps can be used as i was just mentioning the, the, the learning styles can be different okay uh, being into so special education okay what we have noticed is there are different kind of students right so there are some students who are audible that means to say whenever a person speaks they are able to understand it and grasp the concept there are another set of students who are vi visual they like to see graphic they like to see a picture they like they are able to retain more information when they see a kind of a picture audio may not work for them right and there are another set of people who are more of you know doing it themselves they, they, they even if someone tells them they don't understand even by seeing they don't understand but when they do it they learn 
right? So there are different, different set of, so you have different options. Okay. I want to read a book. I will be able to understand only when I read it, I read and I understand. No, I need a video because when I see a video, I can understand it better. Okay. You see a video and you learn it. So options are different. You and luckily today, all the apps are available and beauty is what everything free. The only thing that you're paying is your internet cost and one time investment of mobile that you already done. Connectivity. Students can connect to peers, experts, individuals on any topic that they want. Earlier, there was something so called as a syllabus. The syllabus was something that has to be minimum requirement that a child is supposed to understand so that he will be able to clear his academics was syllabus. Today, everyone talks beyond syllabus. You talk about a topic, something that is required for them to clear their exam and work fine. But kids are very curious. They go one level up and try to search. Okay, by learning this, how is it going to be useful for me? What is there more in it? What is that I can understand? Once the fundamentals are clear, then you can keep on graduating yourself to the upper levels. Right. So when we talk about more information, there are lots of like lectures captured. I've already told you that it can be converted. Your, your lecture classes happening can be converted into audio videos and can be uploaded. And very importantly that I would like to highlight here is that there are lots of course or learn managing systems. Okay, when, when I talk about IBM or any of the organizations today, including uh, Baiju's or uh, Vedantu or any of the uh, learning apps that we are going to talk, okay, it gives a very clear picture of how much of a time a child has spent on a particular topic. He has an ability to take the exams on it and then he will be able to say on this one topic in that micro topics, which level is the child? Is the child able to, has understood this particular 90%, this topic 40%. He needs to spend more time on that particular topic so that he can get to 100%. If that way, a, a management system is available for you, which will micromanagemently individually give you a feedback saying that how much of time you have spent, how much of the courses have you learned, how much time on each course have you spent, totally how many certifications or badges. Today, everything is badges. No one talks about certification anymore. Everything runs on badges. Right. So how many badges have you earned? How many, uh, what are all the kinds of um, uh, technologies have you uh, get got into? I can segregate into topic wise. I can segregate it to subject wise. I can segregate it to any various ways that we will be doing can be captured. But for that, you need to have a proper management system, a learning management system. Online collaboration tools are a lot available. I'll be showing you some of the tools shortly and also ability very importantly is the basic thing, ability to use laptops, smartphones, or classes. Okay, people like me uh, at this particular generation, various times when a smartphone or something comes into my hand, many times I may struggle in understanding few things, but the new generation does it faster. But there are some people who still have some challenges. Okay, even including using a smartphone, a phone may be smarter. Okay, but the person who's going to use it has to be equally smart to use it. Otherwise, you know, smartphone is nothing but a dumb instrument. Right. So mobile devices use uh, to access, you could use it for educational apps, you could use it for uh, books, so called ebooks, if you want to read, you can refer to directories or uh, uh, the dictionary, there is a lot of productivity like Dropbox keynotes, you could uh, rather to say today, I was just facing a challenge, you know, I was just reading a particular uh, screenshot of uh, some data, and then I was uh, wanting to change it into text. And I was, as an as a normal person, I was sitting and typing it across, reading it there and typing it across. And suddenly my son came and said, you don't have to do that, dad. You just have to use Google Lens. It will take the picture of it and convert it into text and give it to you. And I said, wow, that's great. I didn't know this, right? So the, you don't have to sit and do anything nowadays. Everything happens in digital thinking, right? Great. So. What is, or how does this mobile uh, uh, teaching enhance our experience, exponential learning? That is because when we, uh, the person who is wanting to learn, okay, has to actively participate in the learning. That is why I said there are some people who, whom you teach them by audio or video will not understand. They need to do it themselves. So when they participate and do it, okay, they learn it. So they experiment it and learn, and that will never ever be forgotten. There is no revision required for it. Once you learned it, you have done it. Okay, the acknowledgement 
of the prior learning as a foundation to the current learning. So I need to have some basic idea based on which I will be able to go to the next level. Your interaction with others leads to greater understanding and sharing and meaning of concept. Nowadays, there is no restriction. Earlier, when I was a student, I remember, you know, if, if a person is scoring very good marks and I go and talk to him or ask him a question, you know, they were very restricted in sharing their ideas or saying, oh, no, 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 you need to read this or, or you, I had to struggle. Nowadays, it's not like that. Every child is, is in a mode of giving and taking. I know something, I share it with other. The person knows something, they share it. There's a lot of give and take that happens with this generation, which, which is a very good thing. And uh, as an opposed to abstract learning, the complete focus in on the real world task. That means to say more of children are interested or more of learning with mobile technology is going to be, okay, I have learned this. How is that I can implement it? How is it going to be useful for me in this real world is what matters to everyone as of today. So there are a lot of uh, uh, enhanced uh, things that can happen with mobile teaching. Uh, as I uh, initially told you, person needs to be involved. Um, he looks back of what he knew and he evaluates what I have understood, how much have I understood it. If I have understood it, great. If I have not understood it, he has to evaluate himself and go back and learn. That will put him into a more of a self-learning pace. Okay, It determines what was useful and what is important to remember. I might have read a huge paragraph, but out of that paragraph, what is that is actually needed for me to remember is only the thing that needs to be captured. Rest is just again, our so-called English. And how is this information going to help me perform? One activity I have already learned, I have gained this knowledge. How is that using this knowledge, I can perform another activity. And when I keep doing that, okay, I graduate. Mobile technology will help you do that because accessibility is too much. There are different kinds of people who are, who we could have accommodators, we could have uh, divergers, we could have convergers, we could have assemblers. And what are they? The person who is an accommodator prefers, you know, uh, he, he's, he's something who concentrates on, on experience and uh, actively uh, does experimentations, he, more of on YouTube or on social life and other apps. A diverger is a person who concentrates on experience. It's more of to do with reflective observations. Okay, uh, there are lots of apps available for it, giving memos, audio memos, notes, etc., writing it down. There are convergers who are uh, abstract uh, constipular. Uh, they are very active. Uh, they do a lot of active experimentation, and um, they are more of into doing case studies, uh, viewing online, uh, doing homework problems with, with, with uh, restricted on their own, um, you know, converged manner, uh, limited to themselves. And assemblers are reflective observers and conceptionists. They do a lot of research online. They listen to videos. They do view, they view tech talks, uh, 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 new, anything that is new in the world, they would like to explore. So they are more of assemblers. So as mentors, and facilitators, most of us will be, I would not call ourselves as lecturers or professors or uh, more of teachers because uh, as of now, the concept of this is st still existing, but more of that, we have to act as a mentor or a facilitator. When I say mentor or a facilitator, we give them the base idea of knowledge that is being given, but more than from there on, we need to guide them as to how they can do more of their self-learning. Okay. so. Identify the desired result. That means to say, what is that the student should know, or what is that he should be able, information that he needs to obtain. Okay, what is important for that person? Once we guide them that, right, and give them a roadmap as to this is where, you, this is what you want to achieve, and that is possible by doing this, this, this. Okay, end result. What when I say end result is you first determine where you want to reach, what is that that you want to achieve, and then do backward engineering. Instead of putting the first step now and then saying, okay, uh, I'll go next, I will go next, and then find out, oh, this is not where I wanted to reach, then you have to come back. Instead, first you design where you want to reach. What is the end result that you want? To? Then do the backward engineering. When you do the backward engineering, okay, this is what I want to learn. Okay, next, one step back. What are the materials required for me to reach there? You want one step back, okay? Each step-by-step -step approach, if we are 
being able to provide for the end objective that we want to meet okay that will help us by using this mobile technology achieve better engineers there are lots of apps okay everything I, i'll just be going a bit faster on this particular because most of you will be aware you just get into google or any of them you will be able to see lot of apps ebooks okay um, there are lots of books that i that i, I mean i have initiated writing a book on um, a, a handbook for a, a how to be a best trainer okay which which i wanted to publish when i went for publishers they said today no one publishes e uh, hard books everyone is in ebooks you just have to go write a book and upload it into uh, amazon they do all the kind of screening and other things copyright etc said and if they approve it you can upload it into ebooks are easily available and moreover very much accessible because hard copy only if a person purchase it it's, it's he's going to read it ebooks anyone who makes a search and they will be able to access it there are lots of games also you may not believe uh, i was teaching my daughter who is who is in her eighth standard and there was some uh, the, the the school um, you know, had come up with different different kind of apps and covid to something uh, kind of an app that i made her uh, work on okay every topic they have got nice uh, uh you know what do you say uh quiz kind of a thing uh, like playing games you play game and you learn you play game and you learn you write you give, give the right answers you collect points it's been quite exciting she spends more time on playing games now but still my objective is met because she's learning right so lots of apps okay there are imparts impart imparts is something which are we uses the byjus vedantu khan academy kaut idea export max this is all i mean you you just get into and put into all the apps you go into categorization it gives us english math science you put your engineering subjects for everything you have apps available right how do we evaluate the app <clears throat> okay i shall be i shall not be taking too long because i know that i have exited time but we will be quickly finishing on a few more slides and uh, we will be closing the session so i request all of you to bear with me for another couple of slides please um evolution of the apps uh, what we have to do is first thing we have to find out whether what are the key characteristics of that particular app how is it uh, take before you could make a selection okay how much does it cost because cost is one of the factor and is is that cost a one time cost or is there any kind of maintenance that would that needs to be put into that is there any kind of uh, Uh, you know uh, uh, already people who have accepted uh, this particular app how much are they paying if in it's more of a bargaining of uh, how how uh, best uh, deal that you can get but more is what is the cost of the particular product does it have any hidden costs on to it is it a one time purchase or subscription has to be done over a period of time or every year you have to pay subscription okay and any other additional pays for additional storage or cloud services today cloud services is one of the one of the biggest boom you no person has to actually invest in an infrastructure within their organization you just have to pay a subscription fees and a server the storage the um, accessibility everything has been made for free for you because of the cloud technology ibm cloud is one of the uh, uh, very very uh, famous pioneer in giving the uh, cloud technology accessible to people anyways amazon is already into place right so aws and other aspects are there are available for you to you know access this you do not have to invest in any of the hardware as of today okay then coming to apps how much how much uh, when uh, apps are all free so we do not have to most of the time worry about many of the apps but what matters is in case if you have to purchase an app also you have to consider what are the requirements of a devices is my device able to support it one support is my device in the institution ready to support it point two is the student who is going to use that particular app is it the handset or the device that he is going to use is that going to support that or not both ways compatibility is important okay if that is there great if not you may have to see to it that something something that fits into the existing environment can be upgrading is always possible uh how um, can the reports be generated are there any kind of bugs what are the kind of reports that can be generated into a app can i go it into individual level uh, subject wise level there are multiple reports that can be generated and 
is that particular app having that ability to give you the kind of report that you're looking for. The quality of the feature and the support of the app, your compatibility with the student's device, your inputs, and any of the opportunities to export the particular information. And what does the information go? Where, or rather to say, okay, I have captured the information, fantastic, but where does the information go? How is that I am going to have access, accessibility as a faculty or a, as a teacher or a professor or a lecturer? How is that I will be able to access it? From where will I be able to access? Is that the students also have accessibility for it? How is that I can restrict? All those kind of things can be taken into consideration. And then uh, is the app also useful in the classroom? Today we are doing mobile technology. We are working at a remote location. But in case if tomorrow the college starts, will the same app will be able to, I can run the same kind of an uh, app into my classroom and make it more comfortable for people. All those things can be accessed. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who would have done lots of homework behind this. Virtual learning. Okay, is nothing but utilizing of these technologies and supporting and learning these technologies formally or in an informal way is nothing but virtual technology. Okay, that it is it is a uh, what what makes it different from a virtual space or a learning space and learning uh, place is a space is nothing but an architecture which gives an 3D environment or something kind of a thing. Whereas a place is a behavioral expectation. And obviously, when we are into a virtual learning mode, okay, there are some some things that are expected, like okay, in in how is the person supposed to behave in a classroom and in a virtual classroom. Mm, the, the fun functional architecture, the rules and regulations have to be put into place. Okay, the types of technology depends on various instructional institutional needs. Some things, and uh, when you when you say institutional needs, it is just not one department or one particular sector. It is it is the whole institute as such can function as one uh, can be you should be able to use that particular infrastructure and make it every function of that particular that could be accounts department that could be administrative department that could be you know the cla virtual cl uh, classes that have been taken care of or anyone different different functions that are available in a college or an institute every function should be able to attach to that particular virtual and should be remotely accessible and be able to work on it so <clears throat> for a for a mindset has to be changed okay from from an analog institute to a digital institute okay there are a lot of things one is uh, there has to be a, a mind which is supposed to ruthlessly accept the change saying that yes i know i want i don't want to be into the comfort zone whatever is happening up till now was happening fantastic i don't want to change that okay but if you want, that is the analog process that we are working on. But if you want to get into a digital mode, very first and foremost thing is we have to be ruthless and accept that no, we have to change. Only then this change is possible. Okay, the the valuing of rapid, okay, and minimal visible solutions should be there in place. And very importantly, believe in the power of data. Believing in power of data is because most of the people don't like this, you know, because when we say power of data, data means I have a checkpoint at every location. Okay. How much of a time a child has spent? How much child has, has an, uh, has you as an instructor has spent on, on uh, uploading, making, drafting, uh, everything can be checked at every level as to how it has been implemented, how it has been done. Right, most of the people don't like it because we 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 don't want anyone to monitor us that very closely. Our micromanagement has to be done. But then, there are parameters which can be considered. There are parameters which cannot be, which can be ignored. But ultimately, when all these things fall into place, you should be ready to have a mindset to change from analog institution to a digital institution. I think uh, I have. Uh, transferred and given as much as information that I could give to you in this particular one hour. But obviously, we are talking about a technology, we are talking about something, okay, which which can only give, give you an outline of what it is. But to get into in depth knowledge of it or any of the aspects of it, obviously cannot happen in one particular uh, session of an hour. So I'm ready to take the questions. Let me 
try to i hope i'll be able to answer it to you with the best of the ability uh, thank you so much sir for such an enlightening session the participants can now ask their questions through zoom chat box as well as their youtube live chat uh, you're all requested to switch on your videos for photography the link for the feedback form will be sent very shortly on the chat box we will not be sending any link through personal or private messages you're requested to uh, fill it right here and before you leave the session and you're requested to submit it right away uh, the e certificates will be sent in 10 working days via email now we are ready to take the questions So the first question that we have mm -hmm. is so the first question that we have is training part of the education or not? It cannot be uh, okay. Let me say, is it like um, um, is cooking a part of dinner or not? Okay, when you cook, you have to have dinner. You have to eat it. You have to consume. So training and education. Education is obviously, as I told you, education is you are only you are sharing the knowledge. you are giving an information it is it has to be trained because ultimately whatever you have acquired has to be developed into a skill right the readiness of an person coming out of an educational institution is only with respect to how much is he ready to deliver what he has learned obviously when when we do college hires many a times we have seen that i mean we don't get the Let, let let me just explain it in a different way when i go for college hiring okay and we do a lot of screening 3000 people one set of uh, done second set done okay finally we we reduce it down to 500 people and the last uh, set of uh, 100 150 people whom we would have actually got for um, got for the uh, final set of interview technical interview and when we discuss with them okay we have seen that none of them are ready for the market so what we do we finally ask them few questions on whatever they have learned that means say how much of whatever they have whatever education has given them how much of the knowledge have they acquired and then out of them we try to ask them few questions on theoretical basis or practical basis and see who is the person who can be trained and after they get into the organization we spend about almost 6 months training them right and after that another 6 months for that person to actually start implementing again what he has been trained on to make his hands on better to handle critical data critical uh, scenarios right so almost one year of a time we have been spending in making a person ready to be productive to the organization if that can be a part of during the education itself so when you have you have, you have imparted the knowledge to them after the importation of knowledge has been has been given to them how much of them can be trained how much of them are they actually able to implement if that becomes a part of your uh, the institution that means to say that child is ready for corporate it's easy for us to grasp him he becomes productive may not be the very first day that we have hired him but over a period of time he will be ready we will we do not have to wait for one year for that actual person to be ready for us uh thank you sir the next question that we have is sir what is your opinion on the new education system of india one nation one education excellent thought i was reading uh, there is a lot of uh, information that has been come uh, on whatsapp uh, saying that there are new sessions uh, or new uh, guidelines that have been put across by the government saying that we should have why not i mean why why if you, education okay let let us not talk about the policies or one nation one education it should be very simple okay what is required in today's scenario what knowledge has to be acquired in in first grade if you are expecting a child to know abcd it is supposed to know abcd it does not matter which part of the world you are leave about the country if he is in, if if a person is of a 10th grade and he we expect that person to have acquired a particular knowledge fine again it does not matter whether it is going to be because he is in karnataka he should know something more about uh, karnataka because he is in maharashtra he should know something more about maharashtra because he is in us he should know something more about us what is that you are expecting a 10th graded child to acquire knowledge if that bit of it is been covered it does not matter which part of the world the person is so i mean you have a proper education guidelines you have you have put forward uh, saying that okay these are the guidelines this is what we should have one 
one platform for everyone to learn obviously because i cannot if i go to hyderabad or if i go to delhi and try to uh, hire a person and if i ask him a question he says sorry sir this was not in our syllabus no right i expect you to understand this that i i i want you to you are a 10th grader or you are an engineer i expect you to know this if you know this i can hire you if you don't know and he says what can i do sir this was not a part of my institution i did not learn this whose whose fault is that is that the institution's fault is that the student's fault it is the education system which is which has given him the privilege of learning what he is and what is available for him which he has done right so if we have this kind of a single platform then evaluation becomes easy everyone can be evaluated on the same platform is is my input the another question related to the same uh, question is what is the opinion what is your opinion on the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 concept uh, the new policy that has come up yeah it was i mean it's it's a new concept to me also i have just read it today so uh, to be very honest i have not done a huge uh, huge analysis on that nor am i am i qualified to do that because i am not from a more of an academic you ask me about corporate background i can surely tell you how it would be helpful for us in hiring a person to make him more but See if if a government has taken a decision, they have got some thought process which is which is uh, is is already there in it. And if they have made this particular platform ready or uh, uh, justifiable, then it's 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 obviously an uh, debatable issue. People can uh, have different opinions, but I feel that it's going to be good because then what happens is once a child has has graduated from one level, he goes to the other level. Uh, every every year, the tension of taking admission to a new new thing. Okay, I pass my tenth. Next, what? Next, which college? What? 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 Uh, those, that kind of a chaos would not exist in today's uh, environment. Everyone being in this particular situation, people who are past ten don't know where they are going to go. People who are past their twelfth standard don't know where they are going to go. Which institution? What college? Where are CET is going to happen? Where are the admissions going to happen? None of them have any proper ideas. Everyone is working in chaos. Okay, but if there are some structures that have been laid down, then there has to be some value for it. And maybe maybe the government has thought that this is this is something that will have a value add for the academics. but uh, to be, to to be making a very very broad statement on this uh, but if i i am not the right person to answer that question thank you sir uh, the next question is how mobile technology can be used for the class like chalkboard chalkboard is nothing but why okay uh, as i told you uh, there are three sets of i mean different kind of set of students why is that see if, if i am sitting here and telling you a story okay i can sit and keep talking because we are all adults i can understand that whenever i am speaking there are people who would be understanding what i am speaking but when we get on to a, a, a education level okay as i told you there are three sets of students one audible uh, uh, students who can understand by audio uh, audio they when you speak they understand there are some who would like video they like to see the picture right so why is that a teacher actually writing it on to the board okay is because when she is explaining he or she is explaining okay if there are some set of students who are able to understand it so they write it i mean uh, they understand it when the teacher explains it to them but when you write it it gives a visual picture for them and the students who are able to understand through visual and audio both mixed together makes it more clearer using a chalk and audio in a classroom no one is restricting it on mobile technology you have whiteboards you write whatever you want on a whiteboard people can see it rather in a classroom you still have limitations because in case you want to play a video or something then you have to you have to have an infrastructure so called as a digital board or a smart board where you can play that and then you know, becomes interaction otherwise it is just a chalk and a board right but here you are you are using a blackboard or a whiteboard so called on an app you write whatever you want you are able to showcase your uh, audio as well as the uh, diagram that you want to draw still not able to understand even uh, being from an um, electronic background if i want to teach a pnp um, a diode how it works i after putting it onto the board i show them still i feel i am not uh, i i feel that there is a lot of question mark in the face of the student i can run a uh, animated uh, picture which will show them actually how it works right gives a more clarity the whole objective is for you to make the child understand it does not matter whether it's in a classroom with a board or yeah i i don't i am not saying that mobile technology is going to replace classroom sessions no because classroom sessions are required they are hand holding uh, period of a child where you actually and moreover it also helps them to be more social they they spend time together in a classroom they interact um, uh, the concentration is been restricted 
a lot of things happened there are a lot of advantages in having a classroom session but if today we are only going to look at classroom session as one ad, one part of the advantage mobile technology has got more advantages you are not restricting only to a syllabus you are not restricting only yourself to a uh, confining yourself to a particular environment today if i have earlier okay if i want to start a college today first thing that i have to do is look out for a real estate but if i am going to start an and mobile college today i don't have to uh, more more than a real estate i have to in, invest in a cyber estate that means to say i have to just buy a buy a server uh, a space a storage space uh, launch an app and classroom sessions are going to have a restriction of geography people who can travel in that particular location or that particular city or that particular place only can take admission into my college if i get into a cyber or, or if i get into a mobile technology i have no geographical limitation across the globe people can take admission into my college so wonderfully explained very very nice explanation to this question sir so mr praful is asking according to you whether digital learning is beneficial as compared to face to face learning um digital is always i will always say digital is better because there is no limitation uh, however if you want to do digital education your analytical skills have to be very good why i say this is because when i go to google and i put a search the kind of search that i get are enormous okay i have to have the analytical analysis proper saying that okay this link is going to give me the right information or i land up doing a more of research on all the screens and finally get more confused than actually getting the answer for what i actually was looking for okay in that case what happens is if i am get able to get the right information with proper analysis of what i am looking for and that solves my purpose great but if it is going to add more confusion to me then no then it's better to have a face to face communication with a nice guide mentor facilitator a person who can actually to say you that this is the right path for you and then so advantage disadvantage both exists oh uh, thank you sir the next question is from gopinath cb he is asking does online teaching can really replace traditional teaching in its realistic essence irrespective of situations no as it as i rightly told you that you know the the classroom session has an ex, extremely see, okay let let me put it this way um when when i get into uh, today we are all working from home uh, being in corporates we are all working from home to be very honest the kind of productivity that we are able to give when we get into an office environment is much more different from what we can do it by sitting at home right because there the environment itself is different we interact with people we everyone is talking the same language okay everyone has is is talking about the same objective so what happens is there there is no other way by which we will be getting deviated or some other thought process concept the 5 6 hours or 8 hours of the time that we are going to spend in an office is really going to be very productive in giving out what is required for that organization sitting at home i can but more of co coordination more uh, more of uh, you know more time is been spent on mobile talks okay as to uh, just finish of this work that finish of this work which could have just been in an office environment i could be sitting here and just crossing across a table and saying that yeah just send me that mail i have sent you an email you approve it for me now i have to spend time on a mobile or send a message and wait for that person to see the message i am just giving you an an an, an uh, hypothetical example as how it works similarly but if i am in an office things become different similarly when you get into a classroom session classroom sessions have got their own advantages students interact there is more of socializing in case if a particular subject is quite uh, not very much interesting for them even by, by seeing the other person scoring better or interacting with that person how is that that person can contribute in making this person understand that so that kind of an interaction and moreover the kind of discipline that would be there in an in a classroom session cannot happen on a digital platform obviously digital platform has got only few advantages one of the advantages is that the child has got self learning self paced i can learn as long as i want i do not understand i can get it repeated again multiple times but if you ask me is it going to replace the classroom sessions no they are only good but classroom sessions have got their own advantage uh, right from kg1 to engineering it is necessary for a child to be in a classroom or an 
uh, it is more of a handheld period you need someone to you know guide them and take them along which cannot happen digitally very rightly said sir so the next question is again from the new policy that has come up today uh, the question is from vinod roy uh, uh, he is asking is the new education system which is recently announced is better than the previous will it be adaptable for both teachers and students as it and is it the right time to introduce such system in the pandemic situation well uh, good question <laughs> well i i have as i rightly said you know i just got that message that that has been happening and because i'm not into academics i have not given too much of uh, too much of interest in that particular aspect of uh, you know getting into details of it but um, uh, only only time can say whether that would be working out or not but yeah with present situation if they have said that you know uh, change has to happen that that is for true and without as i rightly said we unless we experiment okay lot of study would have happened lot of uh, uh, meetings would have happened people would have contributed lot of experts would have given their inputs and then they would have brought this into into implementation and that to at a national level if they are doing it i am 100% sure that there is a lot of research that has gone into it which which i don't think uh, i sitting in this with a with a corporate background would be a right person to make any kind of a comment on an academic background Uh, thank you, sir. So the last question that we have is from Sandeep Shivani. It's from your domain. Uh, he's asking, does the does on-the-job training lead to skill enhancement? Yes, very much, very much. Because see, uh, the the very reason it says on-job training, on-job itself. Uh, okay, uh, what happens is when engineers join us. When we say that we train them in our organization, what are we doing? When when we say we train them on an organization, we are actually making them work both theoretically as well as practically. And being into enterprise technology, we make them work on a server. Literally, open a server, show them, ask them to reset it, start loading the OS, start loading the tools, monitor it. So over a period of time, actually, on-job training is giving them the skills. Why skills? Because they're actually doing it. Knowledge is acquired. When they do it, they acquire the skills. So skills, obviously, on-job training is one of the the method by which skills can be developed. And that too, especially with enterprise technology, it's very critical. One wrong move, and your data is gone. Just imagine a bank losing all its data, okay, in no time because one engineer made a mistake. What would happen to all our account details? So. Hundred percent, that person should have acquired that skills, and we should have a confidence that that person is has acquired the skills to actually put his uh, put it into implementation. Only then can we allow him to, you know, touch those big technologies and big servers. So it's very critical. So on-job trainings uh, will surely enhance the skills. Rather, I think even if many a things that can be implemented at an institution level of giving on uh, giving uh, development of skills should be implemented. Thank you so much, sir. Here we end the question and answer round. Uh, I hope uh, all the participants have uh, got their answers. Uh, we have a little time constraint, so we are not taking any other further queries. Uh, the session feedback, sir, we have is very impressive, and everybody has enjoyed your session. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, sparing your time and enlightening us with such a wonderful session. I deem it my privilege to propose the vote of thanks. and extend the heartfelt gratitude to one and all present here on behalf of the faculty research cell shamshodana school of commerce i would like to thank uh, all the principal officers head of departments coordinators faculty members and uh, everybody present here for their active active participation i most my most sincere gratitude to our speaker uh, vazarkar sir for this knowledgeable webinar it has indeed been a pleasure listening to you a big thank you to the organizers of this webinar my most humble gratitude to all the participants without whom this webinar wouldn't have been possible thank you once again wishing you a wonderful evening and a festive weekend ahead sir anything that you would want to say 
no it's i just would like to thank everybody the patients uh, they have uh, made it up for this session especially with to the jain university who has taken this extra initiative of getting people across the country across the places from different institutions and you know uh, i was talking about collaboration that not restricted to only one organization you actually have shown collaboration of getting all the people who could get benefited with this particular tech talk so just not mine which is happening today but there are i know that there are happening on a very weekly basis every fridays you have some of the other session which is an excellent initiative and both from the corporate level as well as from the institutional level i would like to really appreciate and i personally would again like to thank uh, uh, everyone who was involved into this uh, anjali ma'am uh, sharmila ma'am uh, meera ma'am who has given the opportunity who made it possible for me to be a part of this so everyone who has who has actually you know, contributed in having this kind of sessions not only this but many more in the future as well as in the past is an excellent contribution for the society and i thank you for that thank you so much sir uh, we would like the end, we would like to end the session now